What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. These Thanksgiving week episodes are brought to you by Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon is a beautiful brand designed for one reason to make your basics and beyond. That means your underwear, your t shirts, your socks. They're smartly designed, and shopping for them is easy and convenient. They started by engineering their own fabric, meticulous design uh, process so you can count on the fit being the same every time. The difference is in the details, so they obsessed over every stitch and seam until they found their definition of perfect. Mack Weldon will be the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies and sweatpants, and more that you will ever wear. They've got a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, which means they eliminate odor. So if you're traveling, you're packing light, you go to the gym, these are important things. And they want you to be comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep it and they'll still refund you. No questions asked, guys. It's Black Friday coming up. It's the holidays. Now is the time to buy stuff for the people in your life that you love. And not to only does Mack Weldon's underwear, socks, and shirt look good, they perform well too. Good for working out, going to work, going on dates, everyday life. And here's the deal for you, everybody. For 20% off your first order at Mack Weldon, visit MacWeldon.com. Enter promo code SMOKINGTIRE. That's promo code SMOKINGTIRE. And get 20% off your first order. Promo code Smoking Tire at MacWeldon.com. M A C K W E L D O N. Promo code Smoking Tire. Get yourself 20% off with that code for Black Friday. And speaking of Black Friday, my people at Crowning Caliber, my watch sponsors, the people who brought us the Watch and Listen podcast for 18 whole months are sponsoring the Smoking Tire podcast for Black Friday through the holidays. And if you ever wanted to buy a watch, let me tell you why you should buy one now from Crown and Caliber. First off, if you didn't know that you could buy luxury watches secondhand, not only is that a thing, not only should you do it, you should pretty much only do it. There's very few exceptions where you don't want to buy a luxury watch secondhand, and there's many, many examples of why you should. Uh, and for Cyber Monday, Crown and & Caliber and their 2,000-plus watch inventory, their technicians on site, and their great return policy, their great trade-in policy if you want to get whatever watch, uh, and their limited mechanical warranties uh, – Here's the deal we got going for you, okay? It's a little complicated, but it's going to save you a lot of money, okay? So for watches under $10,000, you can get $300 off with code 300 off, the number 300 off. For 500 off watches between $10,000 and $20,000, you can get code 500 off and save $500. That's 500-OFF. And if you want to save $1,000, you want to be a heavy hitter, you buy a watch over 20 k you can save code with 1000 off, 1000-OFF, save $1,000 on any watch over 20 k That runs from November 26th to December 3rd, okay? Big money savings, right? But anything you buy, you can return through early January. So if you want to get someone a gift, you don't have to worry that you won't be able to return it or exchange it if they don't like it because they can do so after the fact, okay? Now, maybe you don't want to spend $10,000. No problem. Entry-level watches, okay? Code, write this down, TST175. TST175. One seven five. That code TST one seven five is good for one hundred and seventy five dollars off a watch under any watch over two thousand. So if you spend between two and ten thousand, that's most of your watches on the site. You can save one hundred and seventy five dollars with code TST one seven five. They're adding new watches every day, so check it out at crownandcaliber.com. And if you forget the code. Please email me or something. I will help you remember later.
And it's Autotempest.com. Autotempest is the place to look for cars. You know why? Because it's not just one place. It's all the places, folks. Autotempest does all your car searching and puts it into one place. It searches all the top car sites like Cars.com, Cars Direct, Cars Soup, and then it compares with results from all of Craigslist, and it compares with eBay Motors, and there's new marketplaces being added all the time that it compares with. The bottom line is if you save time, you save money because you are a person who has value and worth and your time is worth value and is worth money. So you should try saving it whenever you can. Autotempest.com eliminates one step of the annoying double work of looking for a car. Whether you're just browsing, whether you're shopping or whether you're looking to sell, Autotempest.com is where it's at. All the cars, one search. Lastly, it's the Thinkware Dash Cam. Holidays are here. Take advantage of it. Get your car guy or gal a dash cam. Keep them safe. Thinkware's best and latest dash cam, the U1000, is now available. It's able to capture clear and crisp videos of your drive. It's the very first two-channel dash cam in the world to boast a native 4K front and 2K rear resolution. In addition to the amazing video quality, the U1000 can also save you money with its speed and red light camera alerts or or make you a safer driver with lane departure and front collision warnings. With the remote live view and parking impact alert cloud features, you can instantly check on your car or be notified of potential hit and runs. The U1000 and Thinkware's full range of dash cams are available online and in-store at thinkware.com, Best Buy, and Amazon in both the U.S. and Canada. With coupon code SMOKE20, that's SMOKE20, S-M-O-K-E-2-0, you'll receive 20% off any regular price Thinkware dash cam. That's code SMOKE20, S-M-O-K-E-2-0 at thinkware.com to redeem that coupon at checkout, available in the U.S. and Canada on their website, thinkware.com. All right, folks, on this episode of the podcast, uh, Mr. JWW, James Walker, is in studio. Um, this dude is different. He's a YouTuber, but he's not an automotive journalist. He's really sort of a, a, a lifestyle presenter and, uh, and, and, a, and a presenter for hire from the OEMs. He travels around uh, making videos under no pretense of doing uh, journalism of any kind. He's just traveling around having fun with cars, and I think that... Um, Whereas I really lean on that journalism thing, uh, I think it's interesting to um, have someone's perspective who does it. So, James Walker, Mr. JWW, on the Smoking Tire Podcast. It's the motherfucking Smoking Tire Podcast. Let me um, speed our backup recorder there in case this uh-huh. craps out like it did before. We good. Okay, swiping up. I, I will put this phone down because I'm aware it looks terrible. You're okay. Here, okay, here's sw- what we're going to do. Look, I'm going to take, you, I'm gonna you, take go. you off the Link, uh, off camera. Until you do. When you put that fucking okay, in, there, it's put- then you can have your camera angle back. Until We're done. Then, it's All right. just me over here. It's, it's done. Welcome to the Smoke and Tire Podcast. <laughs> this is uh, episode one of a double header I'm doing today. I got another show at three o'clock this Check afternoon. All right. Um, which is cool because yeah. it's all I'm doing today. Banging it out. The, Amazing. The last two days have been actually exactly the same as each other, except mm-hmm. for the car I drove. It was wake up very early transport myself to a press launch that other people flew in for and then drive a car all day and then come back down here and podcast and by the time I got home my brain was fucking jelly right. <laughs> hello James how's it going man welcome sir thank you thanks for the thanks invite thanks for visiting us it's awesome to be here man it's, ha- um, you haven't been in this studio I've yet not been, I've obviously seen it yeah. plenty of times online but I've never I feel honored to be sat in in the throne dude. I feel like cool. I normally only see you in Europe yeah, I see you um, on like the. I saw you at Aventador, uh, right? The SVJ, yeah, uh, launch, in Portugal. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, we did meet. In fact, the first time I met you was actually in LA. We grew up. We grabbed coffee down the road from right. your house. This is going back. So that was, was like, a while ago, like four years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, I was just starting out then. I was like really just sort of. It was at sixteen, this maybe fifteen yeah, or sixteen. Like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, this is some time back now. So, yeah, and awesome here you to are. Be here, dude. You are successful now. It's getting there. <laughs> Mr. JWW on Instagram. Come on, screen. There we go. There it is. Oh, man. You're fucking smoking me right now. Two ninety nine. You're so close. So close, man. Go yeah. follow fucking James. Get him at the 300. I appreciate that. Thanks 300K. a lot. 300K. Yeah, man. It's getting there. 
You're one of those like British supercar people that is good looking and wears leather jackets. <laughs> and then I, you know, I I want to be like, oh, he's fucking. British supercar people and their <laughs> their fucking accents and their fucking supercars, but like, but then you you're not. I but then you're nice, and I'm well, annoyed by that. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> Is that like a, a complimentary juxtaposition of you're? A, I want you to be a douche, but <laughs> I want you to be a douche okay? because British supercar people are supposed to be douches. I mean, honestly, well, I'm happy to break the mold, man. Like, but for real, look at this picture. Like, you want that guy to suck? Thanks. I don't want that guy to be cool. I want to hate that, that guy. Yeah, man. No. Leather jacket on that way. In fact, that's really strange. You should bring up that photo because I'm wearing the exact You're same outfit same right outfit. now. <laughs> that's oh, weird. Look at that. Wait, yeah. oh, that's not you. Yeah, that's that, you. That, here I am. That's mad. <laughs> Cranky. How weird. <laughs> this is this is your Ferrari F12 outfit. Yeah, it, it, it is. Yeah, and uh, that was uh, that was taken in Sicily last month. Um, I was invited by Ferrari to take part in the Targa Florio, hey. uh, which is a sort of homage to the original Targa Florio classic car. Rally. So <laughs> how how much rally and how much race is the Targa Florio? Um, like, what's the official position, and then what is it actually like to be in the car and be there? Okay, it's zero of each. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's okay. it's um it? it's more of a a beautiful tour that retraces the the route of the original Targa Florio. So. You end up driving the roads and the routes that like Juan Manuel Fangio would. Yeah, have been but he on. drove them like at a, at at a like pa- ten tenths. at a pace. That yeah, I don't ten think tenths. really is yeah, how yeah. it goes now. That's right? not how it goes now. Um, I mean, I, you know, I won't pretend that there was definitely some like disproportionately swift driving, but the road conditions in Sicily are beyond atrocious. Yeah, so I've I've heard the roads kind of suck. Like you'd be much better off on that tour in an SUV. Like, <laughs> like, like Maybe this is what like, the fur You think is it <laughs> you think the Ferrari crossover is going to be like the Ferrari Florio? Yeah, maybe. That would be appropriate, <laughs> wouldn't Florio, it? It would be. Yeah, honestly. So I've had the TDF 18 months. In that time I've used the nose lift twice and then in the four days that i was twice in sicily in 18 months is pretty good right dude in sicily i probably used it over 40 times I mean, <laughs> and i was there I for four a, days well, i don't have a, an f12 tdf but when i am borrowing any manner of low exotic car mm-hmm. here in la mm. i mean the nose lift and the accessibility of the nose lift is like really really paramount to me is it yeah it's yeah. on all the time it's not up all the time, but okay. it's but I but you want it to be accessible because here in town we don't have you may have noticed this, we don't have um underwater like rain sewers here. Instead yeah. they carve channels <laughs> into the into the pavement. I have noticed that. Yeah. 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 So it, it it's we can argue whether that's good design or bad design all day, but the fact is it's not particularly friendly to low cars. Sure. And so certain cars where you can where you can access that button really fast. Uh, I'm talking about Lamborghini. I'm talking mm-hmm. about Porsche uh, specifically. It's nice and you yeah. use it a lot. So you want nose lift on speed dial. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, need yeah. a quick. You yeah. want you need a quick a quick action, mm, uh, a quick yeah, up, yeah, quick down. Yeah. And like McLaren, and I love McLaren. The worst, the worst lift nose speed. lift speed. Oh my it's god! Slow. It's you like gotta have the steering wheel straight. Do you know it I think sucks. it's literally on a screw thread? Like it's like it it winds oh, really? up. And also, it I mean, probably saves four grams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it's um, I I spent quite some time. I was fortunate enough to do ten thousand miles in a six seven five LT. Great car. Those are good. Turning circle of a Le Mans car is like horrendous. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. what would be a three point turn in any normal car is a six point turn in a six seven five LT. Focus RS, same thing. Oh, really? Focus RS, oh, worst turning no, radius I didn't ever. Know that. Yeah, um, f- uh, transverse engine plus all wheel drive. Oh yeah, just fucking forget, forget it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, LT man, it. it it also had four wheel lift, so not only did it take forever to lift the wait, front, wait. it had f- rear wheel lift. Yeah, too? It, it was like the whole chassis would raise up from front and rear. It wasn't just nose. Is that available in America? Dude, I don't think we could got that in the U.S. Ever like a multiple times, I would approach a speed bump, press my lift. This is such a relatable problem. I know, right? Christ. <laughs> no, listen. I'm with. I, I look in this room. <laughs> okay. In this room, we're family. <laughs> All right. You cool. and I are family. We could talk about this right. out there. They don't get it. <laughs> Um, so yeah. I would press the lift, and multiple times I had people behind me blowing their horn because they were like, "Why are you taking so long?" I was like, "Wait yeah. for my lift, man." Guess what? You, know? you were that guy. I was that guy. You were, and I and Douche I've been guy. that guy. The, but I love McLarens for so many things, but they yeah. do not have a fast and easily accessible nose lift. They do not. The, have you driven nine nine two yet? Mm, um, 
I was not. I haven't spent any decent time in it. I was on the launch, but it was predominantly uh, track. All right. Well, you you didn't need it, but I drove one quite a ways, and I needed it, and it was it's fast. Yeah. It's like I mean maybe it's it's a second and a half off a race car. It's like you know it sort of goes up, and when you let it out, it makes that really Mm -hmm. really satisfying. Like depletion you need of that air. sound, yeah. yeah, it's so good. There should be more cars with factory air should, jacks. Yeah, don't you think? can you imagine? Just like a <laughs> pipe. I would get. I mean, if you could get like, if you could get in that LT, uh-huh. which option would you be more likely to to check? All right, definitely the AC air delete <laughs> yeah. at no cost or factory air jacks. <laughs> factory air jacks, thousand every percent. time. Yeah, yeah, a thousand percent. Definitely, so it'll be awesome. Should put that in yeah, the fucking car. <laughs> um, I see in your uh, in your gramogram mm. that you had some uh, Taycan, Taycan, Taycan. So, so okay, so I did yesterday as well. What is the? Is it Taycan or Taycan? No, no, it's Taycan. It's Taycan. Yeah, okay. They, they take. Ta- I said yesterday, it's not Taken. They're like. Taken's a movie with Liam Neeson. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. Got it. Cool comeback. All what right. did you think of Tycon? Do you drive Turbo Turbo S? Uh, Turbo S. Yeah. Um, I've been asked this question so much. I'm sorry. We're gonna ask no, no, no. It's brilliant. No, no, no. Because Tycon is an important car. Tycon's very important. Um, this green rules. More, more impressive than exciting. Does that make sense? Like, uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's the first time that. I stepped out of a Porsche, or is it Porsche? I, I, it's I, Porsche, but we'll I alternate forgive. between yeah. between the two. And if I say either one of them, the audience always chips in and goes, "It's the other." So the more anyway. Porsches you own, yeah, the That's less true. of a prick you are about the pronunciation of okay. that word. Well, I, I, I only have two. <laughs> So you can two is enough Two's that enough. you can say okay. if you have more than one, say what the fuck okay. you want. <laughs> okay, cool. So it's Porsche. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, okay. Taycan. So yeah, yeah. So Taycan. Um, it's the first time that I've stepped out of a Porsche and approached it with my brain and not my heart. Uh huh. So after the initial "Holy shit, this thing's fast!" when yeah. when you push your foot down, that to me quickly became that's its party trick. Yes. And after that, after you've seen it a few times, you're like. Okay, cool, but same thing with a Tesla. What else? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, same a thing very with... fast zero to sixty time. Yeah, is a great thing to put on a magazine cover. Great on paper, but if anything under like yeah. four really yeah. is just still bananas fast. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that, I was just approached it immediately. Like, how would this fit into my daily routine? You know, mm. I I wasn't like passionate about it in a sort of man, this is going to set my ass alight sort of excitement. Right. It was just like, wow, this is very beautifully engineered. The interior quality is amazing. It goes like shit off a shiny shovel. But it doesn't pull up my heartstrings. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. I I had a, did a week with a Model Three performance oh, last cool. week. Oh, okay. And then I went out in this thing. Right. <laughs> and um, I, you know, I for those of us who were with us um uh, uh yesterday um and you're you know, sorry if you have to hear this again. I I went straight to the canyons with it. They had like a drive route, uh-huh. and I was like, uh, bye. <laughs> I'm going to the canyons. I'll see you later, and I yeah. I'll, I'll bring you back the car at four. Yeah, and um, I drove straight from the hotel to the canyons. Uh-huh. Um, I I approached the bottom of my favorite canyon road yeah. with um 220 miles indicated range. Okay, I drove up the canyon. To where uh, in a very uh, at a medium pace Swift. to get a feel for it, but yeah. not. I wanted to you know have max power for the video. Yeah. Uh, good thing is you know you get full power even if you're not at full battery. Tesla uh-huh. does goes the other. It gives it doesn't give you the full juice. That's right. Yeah. So this does, but um, I was it on the one hand it was. Bonsai. Yeah. I mean, the 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 <laughs> pace that I carried up my favorite road was much closer to like a 720 than a Cayman. That's absurd. Isn't it was it? bonsai is, yeah, fast. Absolutely. And it was so planted yeah. and well, it, super low center of gravity. Super low. And but they're like tank heavy. Yeah, they're, they're like <laughs> 5000 pounds, but yeah. but super low, yeah. really wide, big wide tires uh-huh. and um, you know, Porsche steering. Yeah, I had, have you ever driven another EV besides yeah. this that yeah. has steering that really felt like no, a car God, should? No, 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 not at all. I mean, so I spent some time. I well, spent some time in Tesla. Um, Tesla is the most video game steering that exists. Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it, kind of weird. It actually, took me a little bit of adapting to. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like super fast ratio, but yeah, also but like, like completely v- void of any sort of feedback. <laughs> it's, it's really, really hard. Vi- it's like a cheap <laughs> fanatic steering wheel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good way of explaining. Car it. handles good. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's not engaging. No, not anyway. at all. Yeah. Um, and recently, I spent some time in the Audi e 
which was oh yeah, which was interesting. But you sort of approach that with a different mindset because it's an SUV, like so you're not like looking. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, yeah, so this is the first car. Oh, and uh, Jaguar. You drive iPace. Uh, Jaguar iPace yeah. as well. Yeah, same thing. Um, so, but this is the first car which I or first EV that I was excited about. Mm. I guess mostly because it had a Porsche badge on it, but also I was like, okay, fifty years of motorsport heritage. Apply to an EV. Well, that's, I was like, this that's is really be where I, I, my, I, I went after driving and I was like, oh, <laughs> this is when race car guys do, do this. It. Like, yeah. oh, like these are people passionate about building cars, not yeah. about writing code. 100%, man. Oh, it was a big step on. It's a yeah. big deal. And Huge. also the view, uh, it, it feels. Everything about it. Like almost like a 911 looking out of the, yeah. the dash and all that stuff. It does, and it's yeah. like It did feel actually like a bit of a larger. 911. It does. It, like it uses sort of um, very Panamera. similar to 911 front suspension architecture because uh-huh. it doesn't have an engine there. So you can Which use the nice long control arms. Yeah. And it's you know, fucking hot, dude. Yeah. So it was cool because within like the first mile and the first few turns, you were like, okay, this feels like a, like yeah. a Porsche. You yeah. Know? And I think that that's probably their their best trick is that they've maintained this feel of a driver's car. Yeah. they I, I, they I They've done a really, really impressive job with mm-hmm. making it... Um, really extract the best stuff out of their sports cars. I mean, yeah. obviously, aside from the lightweight and that, uh-huh. but just like the this whole cockpit being sort of sunk down That's into a these. Great spec. In, isn't mm, that nice? That's a great spot. I wish I had those wheels on my on my one. The, that, that, these wheels cool. work because they have the silver lip. Yeah. When it's the body color lip, it's, yeah. it's real it's, yeah. <laughs> SEMA thir- 15 Super years tacky. ago bad. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but it they you know they sink the cabin down into the uh-huh. chassis. You're not up on top of yeah, it. So you sit into it, not yeah, like on it. Yeah. It really emphasizes Man. the low CG. And wait till you fucking guys see the video. I just I reviewed it last night. Is the, it out yet? No. It's no, no, no. The video I filmed it yesterday. All right, but the, okay. the, the the pace of this car up is extraordinary. It's, it's so fast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One did yours have the um the optional sound module on it? Yeah, it made Jetson's noises. Be, like it actually did make though, like noises. actually Jetson's noises. Um on my drive I was sharing it with another journalist. Uh-huh. So I jump out of the car and I'm listening to him drive off and I'm like that what like, it makes it, Jetson's noise outside? Outside, yeah, yeah outside. I didn't <laughs> yeah. think so. I didn't yeah. think that. I thought on the inside it was going to make Jetson's noises for like driver feedback. You and can on the only hear them silent. slow though. Yeah. Like, like um, when I did the flybys, uh-huh. it's just wind noise and tired, tired, like but, stick uh, to tire noise. I had a guy film me doing a launch control, uh-huh. and there's there's like Dude, outside of the <laughs> car, like it's there. <laughs> yeah, it's really. I was like, <laughs> What is this? It messed it's with me a like bit. That, almost like the fuel cut. It does. Yeah, it was so weird. <laughs> That's so fucking know. crazy. And I actually put it on. Um, so I did a quick Instagram story of this of this other guy like taking off, and the comments were like, "Wait, what? Like, is, like, is, the, the, is there a nine nine two off screen?" I was yeah. like, no, "No, the sound is." There. Oh, I th- did you have this video here? I thought I saw it. Is it uh, this? Yeah. It's a video. Is it that is one? That it? I don't know. That, I think that's my promo of the video oh, when it? it went live. I'm trying to find a straight so <laughs> I can demonstrate <laughs> yeah. to you. Yeah. Are you wearing the same shirt again? Because oh my god, this is embarrassing. <laughs> this is unreal. It's got the um, the full glass roof is really nice. The pan roof Tesla does it too, but yeah. I, I, so for me though, I oh, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Um, I think this is the launch control. Is this launch? I think so. <laughs> you, you, might you can hear the sound of the car. Listen to the car. Now it's been into Sport Plus. Are you ready? <laughs> the, the zero to twenty is really it's, it's like uncomfortable. Whiplash, whiplash yeah. territory. Yeah, 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 that yeah. is ludicrous. Yeah. Oh, good terminology yep. to use there. Perfect. <laughs> no, How appropriate. No, no. <laughs> um, no, that's it's ridiculous. Ridiculously. It's a fun uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you watching the video, I didn't play that actual video portion for a good reason. You get it. You <laughs> yeah, get yeah, it, yeah. folks. For sure. Um, but it's. I mean, it, it's definitely exciting. I. It's. It's really expensive. The one I drove was one hundred and eighty-seven thousand U.S. dollars. Okay, that green one was two hundred and eighteen thousand euros. <laughs> that's, that's, that's over two hundred grand. Like, wow. So does this? Did it have a bunch of like paint to sample, color to sample, I crazy? Think, I think that that paint you can ju- just order that one. Um, so, but on the it? inside, it had it had everything. Yeah. Um, that was the Turbo S. There was a lot of controversy around them calling it a Turbo. Yeah, I, you know what? I didn't care at all. I was like, because for me, the word turbo now isn't. 
historically it was because they stuck a turbo on it. Right. But now, it, for me, it's just synonymous with the fast one. Well, that's <laughs> you know that's I mean? their goal. Yeah. They they they've openly said that that they're trying to 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 do that. And I mm. think, you know, you also charge a Tesla on a supercharger that well, is most is certainly not <laughs> a supercharger. <laughs> this is true. And as I said in my Tycon yeah. video, you also drive on a parkway and park in a driveway. So. <laughs> In case anyone's forgotten that, here we are. Yeah. Um, so, but you liked it though. I did like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would consider one actually from a from a daily driver too. point of view. Um, but the but like a, but a four S, not the turbo or the turbo S, like the regular four S. Yeah, regular four because like disproportionately expensive, like yeah. stupid money. And also, I am shit scared of Generation One electric anything. I'm like in terms of depreciation, I think you're going to want to throw that that out with your old iPhone. Like, the, well, <laughs> I, I I've called repeatedly. I've called Teslas intentionally disposable. I think they yeah, are right. I I I mean, I think that the the experience of if you're especially in this city uh-huh. of leasing a Tesla for three years. Yeah. enjoying it extracting all that newness out of it yeah. and then honestly Tesla taking it back and straight recycling it yeah. like don't even sell it to somebody else sure, just, just recycle yeah, the fucking again. thing cuz it it feels like something even though like like it's fe- is it, can something feel quality and disposable? I think yes. Yeah, there think are so. things that yeah, are absolutely. on the nicer end of disposable. Of course, yeah, yeah. Single I, use I mean, stuff. Ultimately, it's just dependent on the material it's made yeah. from. How you fashion that makes it quality, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wouldn't necessarily put that up there with overly quality. Every Tesla I've been in sort of has a, a squeak or a Rattles, rattle for sure, for sure. Which for me just takes the edge off. You know, it takes <laughs> the edge off everything. I'm just like, man, like because. They're still expensive cars. They like, are, even yeah, though yeah. they're not as expensive as oh, a Porsche. Oh, I take the e- your the way you're using take the edge on, off is the, the opposite of how I would use take the edge off. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, take on. the edge off to me mean is like making it kind of like mellow. Like it's like okay, yeah, like it makes everything oh, all right. Oh, 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 take but you I mean see. it takes the shine off? Yeah, it takes how the shine off. Yeah yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I think that's so, the UK to US yeah, translation. Man, if error. I have <laughs> a, like a rattle or a shake in in a car, yeah. I'm like ready to pull over and rip out whatever it is just to make it. Oh, stop. drive you nuts! Like totally. it's the worst. Yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it's fundamental stuff like chassis, <laughs> like squeak, I just get me out. You know, I the Model Three I just had was the first one that nothing fell off of, which That's is always a start. A bonus. It's like a, it's a bonus, but it had yeah. 4,500 miles on it, and there okay. were some some rattles. Right. Okay. So yeah. they're not there yet, but like straight days, up man, though, if know. I leased it for five fifty well, exactly. a month, yeah, I wouldn't sure. be bothered. Right. I, I okay, wouldn't cool. care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And and I think as well, electric cars for me are definitely lease cars. Yeah, like, you don't want to be buying an electric no, car. No, do not. I don't even want to yeah. own my cell phone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, fucking, I like yeah. I lease if my cell phone now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want to take financial uh, responsibility uh, for this thing at all. Forget it. Yeah. Um. So in the uh, let's let's uh, let's give our audience a little background on what your deal is you okay. are you are now a somebody how about Apparently that so yeah how did you go from being just a handsome englishman <laughs> who liked cars to a guy who's buying f12s and taking them on the target floor yeah so i mean how how long have we got like uh, uh, is this like an hour thing or yeah okay this is so, long, long format We're okay good. so um let's go all the way back all right so when i was at school I used to film me and my friends skiing and snowboarding. That's how the passion for filming started. Uh And then we all passed our driving tests and I was like, forget the skis. Let's yeah, the, go ski, film the ski videos ski became videos. car videos. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So then I sort of took the passion of the skiing and snowboarding, applied it on to cars. Um, sadly, the time frame of us all driving when we were still together as friends at school was only about 12 months and then we all left university, college, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, did that, joined the real world, as it were, for 12 years. Um, and in that time, I was involved in the textiles world. Um, textiles? Textiles, yeah, yeah, yeah. So people assume my background has always has always been cars. I've always been interested in cars. How fucking old are you? 33. Oh, you look, you look uh, younger. <laughs> I love how you're saying that like you, you're fucking ancient. No, you look younger. I would have, given, <laughs> I would have put you a little younger. Anyway, okay. sorry, okay. Text, okay cool. So what did you in textiles world? So textiles world um, was developing prints and fabrics to go into, you know, fashion, like underwear, swimwear, Like the actual clothing. materials? Yeah, like the uh. actual fabrics, yeah. Uh, like with a company no one's heard of that exactly. sold cloth Ex- to big exactly companies? Exactly this, yeah, yeah. It's always the folks behind the folks. Yeah. So, and I was only in that game so I could afford to buy a car. 
Right. So and and, and this is when life. So you didn't changed. have a passion for textiles and patterns. Zero, dude. Really? Zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Zero. My family was involved in that world. Uh huh. Um, and so I, I think through the connections of that world, I sort of got pulled into it. Were they into cars or were they just all about textiles? Mm, they my <laughs> Straight dad's into textile cars. life, yo. My dad has always been into cars. In fact, when he was my age and no, in fact, probably younger, he used to race Formula Ford. Really? Which is cool. So yeah. we got some cool photos back home of him in these open, open wheel, Neat. early Formula uh, Ford cars. Um, and my uncle, he still restores classic Aston Martins in England. Really? Um, I did as a uh, business or yeah, for yeah, a hobby? Yeah. No, What's uh, it called? As a business, uh, it's called Chris Shenton Engineering. Um, and he's been he's been been doing that his entire life. Chris Shenton Engineering. Engineering. That's yep, it. That there looks you go. like there this you website go. has yeah. been around that, for that, some that time. That has been around as long as that DB5. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the website of a man in a shed. Uh, that, do you know what? <laughs> uh, but like his shed is is awesome. But Good yes, shed. yeah, great shed. Um, but dude, he's he's restored some incredible cars, and he's been doing that all, all his life. In fact, my first work experience was at his shop. Uh, refurbishing and refitting starter motors on classic cars. Interesting. So, um, yeah, uh, my granddad basically sold classic cars. So cars have always been in the family. Um, but when I left uni, I, I, I never even thought of how do I get involved in this car world. I just thought that was for everybody else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, joined the What was the car world. you bought when you were selling textiles? Um, well, this is part of the story as to how I got involved in oh, what I'm doing well, now. Don't let me get so, um, I mean, my first car was a Mini Cooper, mm. um, and I ran that a while. And then I, while I was in the textiles world, I saved up a deposit for a house, and I blew it all on an Audi R8. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Anyone watching, I do not recommend that. <laughs> Because I was almost disowned by my family, like, like it was heavy cash too. So, like, oh man, yeah, yeah, like fully <laughs> went in there, yes, and like, and I was quite young. Um, but within the same week of me going to look at this Would house, be this R eight, no, or? no, this is way before okay. I was even online. Right? Okay, this was just like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work in, I'm gonna work this nine till five, buy a house, and just you know conform. And I was like, forget that. Like the Audi R eight. It's not long launched, so I bought a 2009. That's first model, year, yeah. First year, um, which and I really messed up because I bought the Artronic, mm -hmm. not the manual. Mm -hmm. You could have done, but you could have done way better. Shit, done dude. I shit, dude. I mate. Well, you this, know better now. Oh yes, I do. Anyway, so. I we all fuck up. Car. I bought yeah, a Hummer in 2006. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, we okay. don't. We, no Things one's go perfect. wrong, man. Yeah. Um, yeah so. I buy th this R8 and it opened up the world of cars for me because I was all of a sudden I was going on track days and road trips and rallies um, and I remembered how much I enjoyed filming when I was back at school so in between that time YouTube had launched and Facebook and in Instagram so instead of like burning it onto a CD-ROM passing it out to five mm. of my friends and going yeah it wasn't that fun I did the same thing and edited the same way that I was doing at school and um, and uploaded it to YouTube and the first proper video I did I think it did like a quarter of a million views in like a week what yeah and what I was, was like, it uh, it was a 458 speciali it was a Grigio Silverstone one um, and it was just like a, a video at a like taking the car from the dealership and just taking it on it's like first drive and it was funny because the Wait, had, you, had you bought the car yeah oh yeah, yeah. okay We're, yeah that's tech that's that textile money yeah that's that, that fabric money that's that finance money oh, that's that finance <laughs> that's money that's that yeah, finance right, money cool. right. yeah, yeah yeah not that i need to yeah. dwell no, on no, that no, kind no, of stuff absolutely. but like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. fucking specialities uh, don't sure. grow on trees no, 30 sure. 33 sure. year olds yeah, buying yeah, these cars yeah. so um i filmed that and it went it went ape shit and um the comments in the comment sections mm. um people were asking all of these questions and i was reading them as oh this question this question could actually be turned into a piece of content uh -huh. so every time i would upload something i would get some more inspiration for some more feedback but at that time i'm still working this nine till five and i just jumped myself on this finance tree that now i can't 
jump off because I've got to keep paying for this car. So the first 18 months of me on YouTube was very much part-time, filming at the weekend only. Um, and then I would start taking a few days off work here and there as the channel began to gain some traction. And yeah. So I went from doing one video a week to two a week, and that was the most I could do. And then, um, out of nowhere, I'm 18 months in, and Jaguar Land Rover I can't Land believe Rover your first fucking video got a quarter of a million views. I mean, I think my first yeah. YouTube video to Look, this I, day has about 4,500 views. It was my, technically it was my third well, YouTube still, video, all right, fine, but, but still. The first two were like test uploads to figure out how this thing works. Yeah. And they were like two, one minute long, if that. So my first proper video. That's crazy. Just got, I think it was, I just lucked out and got That's like. That's crazy. It probably, got, it probably got shared on some big website. Probably. I had no idea. So, um, yeah, because. I do. I had like four subscribers. You know, it wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> I had no that's what I'm saying. Like, that doesn't, it that all. doesn't happen. No, no, not at all. Yeah. So, um, one day I get an email from Jaguar Land Rover, and this is when things changed for me because I went and had a meeting, and they made me sign an NDA. And th at the time, that was all new to me. So anyone in the audience who doesn't know what an NDA is, it's an abbreviation for a non-disclosure agreement. It means Basically, you shut the fuck gonna, up. Someone's going <laughs> to tell you some secrets. Someone's going to tell you some secrets. You can't tell anything. nobody. Exactly. So I went in, I signed th this thing, and they're like, okay, we're launching this new car. This is going back three years ago. So it was like a, I think it was a shooting brake of some sort. So it was like an F -type. XF shooting yeah, brake? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So they were like, we'd love you to present this car for us. And I was like, I'm not a presenter. And they were like, yeah, but we really like the way that you present on your channel. And I was like, okay, as long as there's no script, because I'm not an actor and I'm not a presenter, yeah. as long as there's no script, cool. Just person knowing what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, person knowing what they're talking about, come and do this. And I was, I had no expectations that they were going to pay me for this at all, yeah. right? And after we'd like had some small talk and stuff, they put this like very rough outline of a contract in front of me. And for the presenting gig and for me to create um, basically a, like a social media plan for them was more than I earned the entire year, the previous year. So I was like, what the fuck? And, <laughs> right, right. And wait, hang on a second. Yeah. The previous year. Yeah. Did you buy a special? I, so fi I finance a special. <laughs> I didn't buy one outright. But, but yeah, you earn but, enough but yeah. to finance a special. Yeah, but I but, and you, but yeah, I was I didn't have a home at this point. Don't forget. So uh oh yeah. So it's like uh -oh. I didn't own I didn't own a home then. Uh, right? All right. So yeah, 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 yeah. Th this is why I'm this is why I'm saying how my life changed. It's it was possible like, to have a Ferrari if you don't if have a you house. don't have a house. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So that was w where I was at. Right? So yeah, everything at that time was like rented or least yeah right so until i don't this, recommend that no no yeah <laughs> Ever. But, by the way anyone listening this is just my journey which with hindsight happened to work out okay i just do not recommend that yeah. situation yeah so um yeah that's how that that started um until it was like oh hold on a minute this industry operates in a completely different level that i'm used to and like these guys weren't batting an eyelid at these numbers which yeah. i was like like internally i was trying to keep my shit together like oh my god this is yeah. life changing so i ended up uh presenting for jaguar and then you know what was, was this really for interesting? one gig this was for three gigs okay so um the interesting thing about that is this this ended up this content sat on their channel not mine yeah isn't that which funny is, when really, someone pays really you all that money yeah. to create content and then they don't the take advantage thing. of your audience yeah, which yeah. is actually was, the thing they should want it was super weird so I've had a couple of those gigs yeah, there yeah, where it's, it's really like you want to pay me all this money for a 60 second <laughs> video that's going on your <laughs> Facebook <laughs> page yeah. fuck out of yeah, here alright it's so weird <laughs> line them yeah, up so, okay line them up right <laughs> and it was great because like I I, you know I'm, I'm going to try my best to never sell my audience you know what I mean? Like, right. Try, you know what I mean? So, and this content could have never sat on my channel because it was such an advert. Right. right. So I was like, okay, this is perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's how that started. Now, what was interesting is once somebody had set that precedent, Stand, yeah. the rest of the industry saw it and it hasn't stopped since. And now we're four years later. And interestingly as well, that 
figure that they put in front of me mm-hmm. is is the same benchmark which I used from then on because they set it, not me. I yeah. was like, like I at, at that time, considering how sm- I was like insignificant, dude. Like I'm still working this nine to five. Yeah, yeah. So that's how th- the sort of baseline started. Yeah. Really. yeah, I think between the uh, YouTubers I've talked to recently, mm. I'm definitely selling myself short. Yeah, by a, a lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, think I. Yeah. I think I'm. I think I. In order to avoid the potentially awkward back and forth negotiations of it and also acting as my own agent you don't want to come off as a dick and then you got to show up and work for the person with a smile on your face yeah but talking to some other people yeah there's some folks that are it's really gaining traction really smaller than me that are but i also have shot myself in the foot for referring to myself as an automotive journalist from the very beginning yeah which means that you know, you don't get to take money from manufacturers. For and sure. manufacturers have the most money. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You, by just being a car fan with a camera and not using the J word yeah, ever. That's right. Yeah. yeah. All but, right. But And also, like, I wouldn't, you know, I have I have no journalistic experience. Like, Of I, course. I, I'm not a journalist. You know, I'm just a good guy that Well, I'm not cars. a trained journalist either. Right, okay. But I think when yeah. you use, I think, I don't think it's, I don't think th- that word is tied to experience i think that word is tied to at least i hope it is Uh um an agreement to uphold a certain standard of ethics i would agree with that and and if you don't uphold that standard Mm -hmm. it doesn't make you a bad person Uh it doesn't it just means that you don't get to use that word and so that's kind of like it really and so i chose to to position myself there yeah and for better or worse you know i don't get to cash that fat check but i get to write for road and track which i which Which in some ways uh, you know uh, which was a conscious decision and so it's okay but at the same time i'm just like Oh damn! This motherfucker's rolling an F twelve and <laughs> oh. <laughs> shit. Yeah. So basically, my entire That's life crazy. changed. Um, and um, yeah, it's been an insane ride, man. The channel. So crazy. Um, the channel is gonna. Ha- it, it might even hit it while we're sat here. I don't know. But what are we? Are you are you up on a milestone? Well. The subscribers are about to hit half a million. However, let's see where subscribers we're at. don't. By the way, subscribers don't mean shit. Anyone who's Oh yeah, you're this. at 499k. Go okay. subscribe to Mr. However, J. Dub. Look you here, go you're gonna to get about, mine right now. Oh, that's very kind of you. If, if, if you I was the 500k, that oh, would be so jam. sick. Uh, if you go to about, uh, about, yeah. So that should tell you the v- channel views. What's that on? Like just shy of 100 mil? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, channel views, 96 million. Right. So that's how much subscribers don't matter. Yeah. You want to? <laughs> yeah. So half a million subscribers, dicks? 100 million views it, it is because the what? reason I'm saying this is brands get so tied up on headline figures of how many Woo! subscribers this person got. 280 million views. Oh, yeah. That's sick. Yeah, that's but I proper. had, when was your first video? Uh, four years ago next yeah. month. Yeah. So I had a, a six year head start on you. Hey, that's cool. That's yeah, a, nice, I didn't, nice. uh, and that in, at the time, those... Yeah, those early years were a challenge. Dude, it was you, a bit it was tricky. If you're on that six years, be- so you well, you're basically on there ten years ago. That's what's my known first as a pioneer. Yeah, well, that was <laughs> yeah. when the smoking tire started. Was ten. Look, January twenty right. third, two thousand nine was uh, the smoking tire. Yeah. But wow, I okay, was doing yeah. Garage four nineteen in two thousand seven. Wow. So I had my okay. first YouTube videos were within six months of YouTube becoming a thing. Being a thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is super early. So you were there before it was Google. Yes. So oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. No, Yo, ad my rev, first, nothing. my first videos yeah. are so old. <laughs> Sounds I'm like not a your kidding. mama joke. Yeah, <laughs> my first videos are so old yeah. that they use Pearl Jam as a soundtrack, and it's it's and so it's old, still, still allowed there. to be monetized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. Pre DMCA, they're like 240p. I'll show you when we're off the show. 240p. It's a, it's this fucking is amazing. Hilarious. It's yeah. the New York Motor Club videos, which are really, really old. Uh-huh. I think you might be hanging on youtube.com slash New York. It might still be amazing. there. I don't know. Yeah. The videos are definitely still there. Is the channel still there? Yeah. The channel's still there. Look at this. 168 wow. subscribers. Look. Amazing. About. 
Joined December 8th, 2006. That is... Dude, that's launch year. I'm that is sure. launch year. That, that was my first zero, channel. Man. Wow. And here's my first ever videos. You can go find these still. My first ever video, 12 years ago, 4.6 thousand <laughs> views. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I could probably play this because I, I'm not going to sue myself. All right, do it. I don't think it's monetized. Has this got Pearl Jam on? Uh, no, but look, this is some shit that <laughs> we... It. Me and Larry made this Four by with three a real aspect. helicopter. Larry Casilla. Yeah. Hang Dude. On. Hang on, look. Ready? Was he doing ammo then? This was no. a promo for our first event. This is our first rally. Uh, it's coming together quite This was well. so... I mean, just this was our shop in, that we had in, in, in New York. Larry looks 12. Yeah, he was. We had... Bunch of these cars. Here's a montage of exotic cars. Oh, There's good. my Aston. That GT sounded. And look, this is pre-drone. We hired a real Are you helicopter serious? for this. Yep, yep, yep. This was, this was like so old. Hey, you were and really operating on a high was, level for this. We spent so much I can, money on I can this. Tell. We were the dumbest people on the planet. That's a helicopter flying over a bridge with a series of exotic <laughs> cars. This is like a movie trailer. This is really cool. We spent I'm impressed, a man. Fucked up amount of cash making this video. It's a minute long, and it's just like it's like a bad movie trailer. It's like a B, a B yeah. action movie, and people are driving <laughs> like driving like complete uh, dicks. And this is cases. all on an actual jet helicopter. That's unbelievable. <laughs> But that dude, acceleration like, at the end is sack in. because back then it was like <laughs> basically at 2006 YouTube was used as a place to get a hosted link that you could share right. somewhere else. The whole point of this uh, New York Motor Club thing was yeah. we had this driving club and we were like, if we make these videos, like people are going to think we're cool and come <laughs> do our driving club. Yeah. 400, 127 wow. views. Fuck, fuck, what was I doing? <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, isn't it incredible how things change? That is absolutely Unbelievable. Nuts. But go to, go to YouTube.com slash New York yeah, Motor Club and watch my out. videos. I'm going to go check this out. From 06, dude. Best. December 06. Wow. Oh, here, P45. Jim, here we got Jim Glickenhaus no way. Driving, this, driving the P45 on the street. NSX. Fucking whatever, yeah. Enzo, oh, man. Enzo's, good times. It was, so it that was, was brand new, basically, then. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Let's see what's the it's what's so the good. resolution? Two forty p or like four by three aspect. Yeah, the en you know whose Enzo that was. This was the CEO of Verizon. He was a customer of ours. Casual. Eduardo yeah. Menese was his name. Awesome. He was actually fairly chill for. Looks like that. he's having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. So Sick. okay, over in um over in the UK where yep. you do most of your of your shit, like uh -huh. I find that I find that like car culture, like for car enthusiasts, like. I think because cars are so much more expensive to own there, like mm. I feel like they they have a much more better appreciation for like something about like car entertainment is like mm -hmm. more valuable a service over there than it is here. Do you think that too? Yeah, well, I mean, I actually haven't spent that much time over here, so I, I'm not I'm not entirely familiar with how the car culture here well, operates. Well, for instance, we in America yeah. absorb a lot of English automotive media. Do the English absorb a lot of American automotive media? No. See, that's one. That's interesting. Yeah. But that's probably because you say chassis. <laughs> <laughs> and sedan and yeah, trunk. Sedan. And you're like, ew. <laughs> what? You know um, what's fucked up? The English people really make fun of the fact that I have a smaller vocabulary than the average Englishman. You know, I, I have right. four or five different ways of saying something so and you have seven yeah. or eight. Right. So I tried to like expand my vocabulary with some new words yeah. and people were making fun of me. Like, who do you think you are? Fucking Chris Harris? Like, what do you <laughs> Shut up, Stupid American, go back to your dumb words. <laughs> Say bro more, oh, loser. <laughs> no, but um, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, it's not. Interestingly, well, when I look at the analytics of my channel, my two, my second most, no, well, I'm trying to think how to word this. My second largest audience, yeah, is US, and I'm not exaggerating. I think ninety percent of that audience mm -hmm. is. California. <laughs> That's not surprising. Yeah. That's not surprising. I mean, for us, obviously, America is the biggest, but mm -hmm. uh, within America, mm. uh, I think it's 44% is California. Wow. Which is that's wild. Amazing. I mean, yeah, I don't huge. know if that's just because. I'm like a fucking liberal snowflake, and, and so that's and who we attract because we're here, Maybe. or because that's just where more people yeah. are. I mean, I don't um, know, because obviously I, I have very little connections out here, and all of my audience basically is California. What uh, what percentage UK are you, though? You got to be like- I'm way up there. Like, I'm, it's like 35 
percent is uk is uk oh, I, I, when you said yeah. way up there i would have thought it was more oh, like well, i'm like i'm like 65 percent us us okay no no it's like you know it's like 35 uk 28 us and then germany is third it's always third and i think that's that, interesting i think that's because Do you have your videos translated into german no but they're a nation of petrol heads and mm -hmm. most people speak english that's interesting yeah um and then after that it just disseminates across the planet mm. it's like i mean one one day fourth place will be norway and then it'll be india like it's just all that's over the really place. strange yeah for yeah. me it's very it's like English speaking, predominantly English speaking countries uh -huh. added up. So U.S., Canada, England, yeah. um, you know, uh, Australia? Australia, New Zealand, right. and then the Middle East. Right. And the, and and after that, it's like yeah. once you get to the Middle East, I'm uh -huh. down to like two percent, three percent. Right. Okay. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really Super U.S., Canada is like eighty percent. Okay. England, Australia, uh, New UK, Zealand. You're third. Huh? Is UK third? UK is third UK is behind third. US right. and Canada. Right. And then Australia and New Zealand are like sort of tied. Uh -huh. And then the last little sliver that you can really measure yeah. accurately is the Middle East. And then it's like point oh twos. Yeah. But Germany numbers. doesn't make the top five, That's which always really surprised interesting. me. Yeah. Wow. And when I yeah. go to Germany, yeah. fuck, no, never recognize nothing. Is that is really interesting. I only yeah. get wow. stopped ever in English speaking countries. Right. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Hey guys, get in the super chat And we're going to get to those shortly mm -hmm. After I asked James What do you, uh, you know As YouTube continues to evolve The mm. stupid algorithms mm -hmm. And what is required Bro. And what yeah. makes people successful or not Do you do you are you a stats guy? Do you study the stats? Do you chase the algorithms, or do you just do What you're passionate about And then hope people follow and find you um, and I mean in terms of a, of yeah. a YouTubing strategy yeah. more than anything else. So I'm actually thinking really long term. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually, I'm using YouTube, yes, to share passion and, you know, like basically broadcast to as many like-minded people as I can who, who, you know, appreciate the same things that I do. But I'm really using, and it doesn't matter if it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, I'm using this to build a brand. Mm. So I'm building brand because brand will transcend platforms. So one day, if YouTube isn't woven into the fabric of culture like it is now, hopefully mm, the brand equity with the audience will be. So when it's like, hey, this new YouTube thing's popped up and I'm yeah. on there, cool, hop there. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, the longer goal, and you'll see a lot more of this happening from me next year, is very much stuff which isn't on YouTube. You know, I'm, I'm trying to build things outside of that. I don't want to be reliant on that. Yeah, you, the, I learned a few years ago yeah. to work very hard mm -hmm. to, f to get money from places besides YouTube. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, I've, yeah. Had, I've sure. had a few people tell me how much money I'm leaving on the table with uh -huh. YouTube. Right. But I'm also like, yeah, but I'm getting yeah. all this money from For over sure. from not YouTube, yeah. and I feel a lot better about it because uh -huh. I have a lot more control over it, uh -huh. Absolutely. and, yeah, and I course. feel like a raise is possible. Yeah. You know, the problem with YouTube is just yeah. that you can never get a raise. You know, no, it's, it's hard. A times B equals C, yeah. but not only do you have no control over A, uh -huh. A is the algorithm, B is your views, and C is your money. So A times B equals C, but... A, not only do you have no control over it, you uh -huh. don't know what it is. Nobody will tell you. It's basically gambling. There's no, yeah. It is. Exactly. Honestly, I'm not joking. When I press the upload button, I feel like I'm at the craps table. Yeah. I'm just like, blow the dice, hope for the best. Yeah. You know, and so this is why for me, brand equity is so much important than, so much more important than views because I'd sooner have quality over quant. So, right, like, but YouTube is a quantity. It game. is. It is it's not a like, quality game. I'm really hoping to cultivate a much smaller quality audience yeah. than a than a broadcast just wishy washy audience. Well, if you can get a quality audience yeah. that will that you can get more, and I don't mean this cynically, but get more money out of per fan. Uh -huh. If you could have. A thousand exactly. super fans that yes. each gave you <laughs> super die hard. A, a couple hundred dollars a month. I mean, this sure. is hypothetical, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know, uh, uh, versus uh, you know, really having to deal with YouTube directly and and sure. and find yeah, a way yeah, yeah, to yeah. sort of to tame the masses. So how I, I mean, 
I think I've I, I've inadvertently only asked the audience to buy something once, which is when I did a collaboration on some clothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, hey, it's on the website if you like it. Cool. But did I you sell my Yeah, it was all sold out in 48 hours. Well, there you go. Which is cool, but... Did anyone complain? No one complained. Yeah. No, no, no. Also- but what I'm trying to do is when it comes to that point of... Effectively, it doesn't matter how you spin it, you're asking, aren't you? You're like, okay, please buy something right yes but i want to get to a point where i am not the the, every time something appears online from me it's value for for the audience and then they're not going to open this and go oh what's he trying to push this time sure so my strategy is very much to get the brands to support the channel to to support that so that every time someone logs on they know they're not going to get sold to and they're just going to get really shit hot wait a content. minute they're not going to get sold to because the channel's supported by the brands hang on that doesn't no, make like, sense like I'm not going to ask them to buy something from their oh. own pocket oh, but people oh, parting right. oh, with the so money of the brands okay fine yeah. so you're saying traditional advertising funded by brands is good yes. integrated content yeah. is good uh-huh. selling merch is bad no it, it's not bad i just, just don't, don't want to do it i just don't want to ask my audience for cash oh see you know i totally understand mm. and i don't want to ask my audience for cash which is why we've never done a patreon or anything even right. though i think we'd probably be very successful at it uh-huh. we use the super chat function that's built into this yeah but i don't have to physically say make sure. a donation or uh-huh. whatever it's mm. part of the software mm. mm-hmm. um and also super chat is a really good way of filtering out people who want have something to really say versus yeah. someone who usually someone won't give you five dollars to tell you to go fuck yourself for sure, for and sure. if they have <laughs> believe me i won that half of the of the <laughs> yeah for sure um i think the easiest way of explaining it is i'll probably never do a subscription model right well that's, that's fair that's, that's, that's totally that's fair probably the, yeah the easiest way i guess if you are asking for someone to buy something whatever they buy either want them to really love it there's nothing you know wrong I mean? with asking them to buy something if mm. what you're selling is the kind of is of a quality you can stand behind yeah if you're right. advertising it in earnest you're uh-huh. not trying to trick somebody sure. you're not trying to Super scam somebody we have people ask us where they can, why can't I buy more shirts? I want to buy mm. more. So when we've offered shirts yeah. and stuff, we try not to overdo it with the merch. Yeah. We do one shirt every other month for, that's a, cool. for a 10 day yeah. sale. Yeah. And that's pretty, pretty minimal. Yeah. And um, it does okay. And no one complains. Yeah. And people ask us where they can buy, where they can buy merch. Do you know what? I think weirdly a physical product seems like it's okay because you're yeah, yeah. getting something well that's right? people are like i want to donate cool. and i go yeah, yeah, just yeah. buy a shirt and they go i don't want a shirt i go give the shirt to somebody shirt. yeah but like sure. i want like, i don't want you to just hand me money i'd yeah, rather sell exactly you something how, like, that's yeah. what i mean like yeah, I, that, yeah. there'll never be a sort of subscription based thing right. i think if you're gonna if you want to buy something and you're getting something physical in return yeah Cool. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, and we work with Blipshift, which is great because they just do. We don't handle anything. So it's like a drop shipping service. That, like, that, like we design the shirt with them. Yeah, yeah. They have designers. We concept it. Right. They design okay. it. We approve it. We market it. They That's print cool. it and ship it. And yeah. we don't. They just send me to. And I don't. Cool. I never All touch right. a shirt other than that. that it's lovely. Good, I can that set you up with good. them if you're interested. Dude, the last time we made a product it was great but it was like we i held physical stuff no you know never never do that no yeah no, no. that was they've, that was a they've hard got thing. people yeah, for yeah. that now in but, the beginning we did too yeah, i was yeah, i was yeah, i had it. i had bins of shirts yeah. but what i didn't want and this is going back to if i am gonna sell something to the audience um this comes back around to it in order to represent my brand i can't have a Fruit of the Loom t-shirt with a logo on it. Totally. Like, forget yeah, that. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? So the products we made, like going back to my textiles background, they were like proper nice. designed products, uh-huh. great fabrics, etc. cetera. Um, and at that time, I couldn't find anyone who was willing to drop ship my own stuff. They mm. only wanted to drop ship their stuff. That makes it was sense. like print on demand type totally. of thing. And I was like, I don't w- want to do that. Yeah. So. Well, Blipshift is yeah. good because, and, and I don't even mean to just make this about Blipshift, uh-huh. but when you go to order, for instance, if you go to my, my online store, which is uh-huh. uh, blipshift.com slash TST, uh-huh. where you can buy the Simplify and an ad LS shirt that we have right now. Uh-huh. When you um, pick a size, mm. there's different 
you have op- different options of fitted tees, heavy duty tee, premium tee. So you can buy you can the nice the American good. apparel tee or yeah. the super beefy tee that uh-huh. you're going to wear at the gym or in the garage or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So we do offer those options. And by the way, you can get this shirt <laughs> until, <laughs> until uh, for three more days. So do it now. Go to blipshift.com. <laughs> um, you um, like how I slid that Yes, in? that was great. I need to spend some more time out here, man. However, the, and this is gonna this is going to contradict everything I've just said. So- this is fun. What's that? This is fun. So I've been wearing these quite eccentric sunglasses on my channel for like uh-huh. the last three years. They got these, these like sort of mesh side guards on them, and they're quite. Let's fu- I'm gonna flamboyant. find a picture yeah. of you in flamboyant sunglasses. Um, Hang on, it won't take long. And um, right here, three seconds. Uh, is that there you go. Yeah, probably. So anyway, every time I wear these things, there's like 10, 15 comments. Where'd you get the glasses? Mm-hmm. Where'd you get? The- so I was like. Man, I'm sick of referring these guys to someone else's brand. <laughs> so I was like, actually, I haven't ever found the perfect pair of sunglasses for me. So I'm in the process right now of making them, making those. Right. Well, these ones so, that you're wearing are yeah. from somebody, right? Yes, someone. That's well, right. Yeah. Why don't you just call, get a deal with them and be a retailer? Well, I spoke to them and they were like, no, do we want to keep oh, really? in the house and all that sort of stuff. Well, I was like, okay, screw you. I'm going to make these properly and for half the price because the ones I'm wearing are so sickeningly expensive that I thought this is beyond a, a joke. It yeah. can't be well, this Well, the expensive. sunglasses, you know about Luxottica, right? Yeah, of so course. This, I mean, yeah, yeah. Lux, if, for those who don't know anything about the sunglasses business, John Oliver did a, uh, a piece on it or I, mm-hmm. I think it was John Oliver, but there's been multiple pieces on it. Like yeah. all sunglasses companies almost are owned by one company. Yeah. It's disproportionately <laughs> those guys. Yeah. 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 Luxottica, I think... I think there are twenty billion a year. It's crazy. Brand. Yeah, and uh, so you're just gonna make your own. Knock them yeah, out. That's I right. like it. Yeah. So um, if that brand had that said yes to you, mm. that would have been what my relationship is with Dylan Optics because okay. I started wearing their right. sunglasses. Okay, cool. People started asking me about them. Yeah. And yeah. then I got a deal with them, and they were like, "Yes, you can be a retailer for us." Okay. Interesting. And now it's yeah, uh, yeah. it's a decent uh, source of side income. Okay. Cool. So no, I would like. I mean, and. This as well for me is goes back to wanting to build brand. Yeah, there's only so much that I want to push someone else's brand, right? So I'm like, man, I put all of this effort into JWW, this, this, and this, and then everyone's asking about these glasses. It's a shame to go and send them to like Fred, right? Douchebag, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna sit what down does it take and spend to make some sunglasses? time. A, a unbelievable amount. It, it it's getting scary actually yeah yeah and i sort of committed by announcing it to the audience um, yeah don't do that but, well <laughs> i kind of did that on purpose because i was like if i don't i'll just let it slide by right so i was like okay now i've really nailed my hand to the board here and i'm That's very uh, funny. i'm doing this but um yeah it's it's a product that i probably wear even in england when it's gray and overcast and, we- and wet i'm wearing glasses like every oh. single is this day them of the right week. here with the with the side side pieces that is that is yeah, those yeah yeah. yeah yeah so um yeah man i'm in well i can't promote the them because i have an exclusive no, I know, I know. <laughs> but <laughs> i can certainly respect it oh here's a good here's a good side that's shot. the thing actually yeah the thing? The thing. Sorry. If you oh. go the oh, central this. Oh, line, the drawing. that's the announcement of, oh, of it happening. Yeah. So that was like the first sketch when I started to meet with people about making glasses. Yeah. So that's Did you that's Who started. sketched these? You didn't sketch this. I didn't sketch them. Okay, cool. No. Guys who make glasses sketch This one's a little steampunky. Yeah. Well, the glasses are very steampunky with yeah. the whole like side. It looks like you've just stepped out of... Um, What's that festival that you guys Burning have? Burning Man. That's it, Burning Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks. I recommend like that. doing that too, by the way. Oh, dude, it looks amazing. <laughs> let's, I, I uh, love to. let's go to the crowd. We've got a few. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Weir and Felt 1990 wants to know what's in your watch box these days? Um, do you know what's funny? AP or Hublot today? This is a, a, AP. AP. Yeah. AP. This, um, this I, 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 I bought on my 30th birthday. And it's my daily driver. It's a Royal Oak Offshore? It is. I believe. It's a 15. Uh, the reason I went for 2015 is because that's when they introduced the display case back on them. Because up until then, the, the Offshore didn't have Yeah. That. You want to so see the movement. Really the nice. movement is yeah, quite well, lovely. Yeah, well, it's nice. Every time I put it on in the so, morning, I just like stare at it and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's a good piece. Good yeah. chunky weight. And it's um, the AP Royal Oak Diver. Diver, yeah. Yeah, which sure. is a very interesting piece uh-huh. with a, uh, a rotating inner bezel. Inner, that's which correct. Is here. Let me yeah. just... Uh, yeah. Let me just show the people yep. what that... May I rotate your bezel? You may rotate so, my bezel. <laughs> you can rotate the, the inner... Yeah. 
Do I have to unscrew yeah, this crown? Yeah, okay. You have to unscrew, unscrew it first. It. Okay, cool. Yeah. Unscrew the crown. Sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to break your watch. No, that's cool. Um, so yeah, that, yeah, so, that I wear. So you I'm can not... rotate the inner bezel like that. There you go. Yeah. So uh, when you're setting up for your dive. Yeah, unless you, let you know how long let's how long know. until you die. Yeah. That's a, <laughs> Royal Oak Divers, that's yeah. a lovely piece. Um, so this, yeah, 30th birthday, up until that point, I'd never owned a watch. Can well, you believe that? first one. Yeah, so this I've bought on the 30th and I've worn it every single day since I'm not sure if your camera picked it up but it is beat to hell like it's scratched that's it's alright it's got life in it that's so, fine but a, that a, I like a good watch is a beat watch I mean AP were like do you want us to polish that up I was like no, no. hell no. no right thou shalt not polish yeah and then I recently um, got a uh, Hoya Tag Hoya Monaco oh, yeah. caliber 12 cool the new one really nice yeah, yeah I really one. like that yeah, um, I have the Hoyer that, that Octavia cool. 02, the okay, Hodinkee cool. one, which is the reissue. Oh, yeah, that's cool, is yeah. super cool. Nice. I was at a t- tag event last week, and they had a Silverstone. I'm mm-hmm. not sure if you've seen it. Dude, so nice. Yeah, they're cool. Really, really nice. And it was, I mean, it was an original. The, and it it's just sort of, it's amazing. a really interesting, the Silverstone's a really interesting watch mm. because it doesn't look like anything else. It's got... No, it's got a deep on. dish on it as well. It looks like, like a TV from the 50s. Yeah, that's Wait, exactly I, it's this. Like. That's it. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a really weird it's watch. It's super cool. But it's very nice. Yeah. So I would really like one of those at some point, but I'm not sure how much an original one of those the is. The reissue is like 3500 bucks. Okay. Yeah, they're not expensive. Oh, wait. Right. Oh, an original. Yeah, oh, an that's original. A, no, that's a skipper. Hang on. The original I just want something with is the story. So I can be like, hey, one, um, <laughs> a used Hoyer. Hang on. Let's find out. Yeah. Used Hoyer Silverstone. Silverstone. Let's see. Silverstone. I mean, what ye- five year grand. was that? Five grand. So it's not atrocious. No, okay, not atrocious. Cool. Okay, yeah, cool. you're, you're good. So yeah, cool. Oh, the that red. Nice. The red that is one. what you yeah, want. Yeah, that's the red yes. one. Yeah, that's the one with the red strap. The red is excellent. So they had that at this event I went to. So mm-hmm. I was at the 50th anniversary of the Monaco last yeah. week. Um a watch launch is I hilarious, know, know, isn't yeah, it? So funny. In fact, I will sh- show <laughs> the you the idea of a watch so launch funny. is very funny, but it's I, I get it. Yeah. Uh, while you're looking, nice. yeah. my watch box. I'm wearing the GMT today, which I love. Cool. And um, there's a few a few steel Rolexes, and I've got that Hoyer Octavia, and nice. I've got a Grand Seiko, and I've got a Weiss Custom. Shit, you got all sorts of watches. I've got a few. I've I got have, a few. I have those two. Yeah, that's it. I, but I, I, but it's for me. Like I turned like two cars into ten watches. Okay. When I downsized, so they had this. Steve McQueen life oh, wait, size put, model. Hold that up there. to this camera because it's hilarious. This is this life. Wait, back it up. Yeah, this is life size wax Steve McQueen doing the fucking upside down P side. <laughs> that was part of the uh, That's launch. That's awesome. So. Yeah, it's cool. uh, Simply Modified says thoughts on the Fiat 500 Abarth and future of the Abarth brand. I'm not a big fan of the of the 500 Abarth. I'm not either. Um, I I do, however, have a deep craving for an original Fiat 500. An old one. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, like, as you should. There's ju- it just strikes me as like the ultimate pub car. You know? Yes. Like just cruise on the down best on a pub sunny car Sunday. ever was that guy in England who I hung out with, Scott, who's got that Rata Rosa. Thing? Yeah, that thing was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that was so a, funny. Uh, Rata Rosa, yeah. look up on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. The best um, pub car. <laughs> no, Abarth's cool. The, the driving position is atrocious. Yeah. It's like you're sat on a chair it's not a, a ups seat. truck yeah it's really strange so yeah. i'm actually not a big fan i like the cars. idea of the abarth brand yeah of course but i don't like any of their cars no so yeah, yeah. sorry kc nielsen says uh one aston from history to drive three or four days a week what historical aston would okay. you want to drive three or four okay. days a week i i'm not sure you'd class this as historical uh, and I'm so close to buying one of these cars. Mm. Um, is the not the original DBS, the 2008 9 DBS? Oh, the one with the body kit on it and the stick. Yeah, yeah, manual, you can drive that manual V12. Yes, looks awesome. Um, Bond car. 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I just think th- recently, aesthetically, they've come full circle, and I'm just like drooling over them, and they're, they're and they're super sick. So I'm, I'm that. I like that. That's a <laughs> yeah. good choice. Yeah, yeah. I would say a 2011 V12 Vantage. Okay. Would be a great one. Yeah. Uh, if you want to go further back from that, uh-huh. I'd fuck with a an 80s Vantage yeah, flip vantage, tail yeah, with a sure. big motor yeah, that's cool. and a four speed yeah, or a five, yeah. uh, five, speed. five speed all day. Yeah, I would yeah. fuck with that. Cool. Or one of those twin supercharger <laughs> N600 <laughs> Le Mans Bad thing, like V600 yeah, Le Mans, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, Cameron Schmidt wants to know, how would you spec your new RS6 Avant? We got to talk about that. Actually, I we can't. can't. It's embargoed. We can't talk Did you drive that. it? No, I'm doing it on Saturday. Okay, cool. Be- beyond excited. About it's, this, it is uh, cool. I can say it's very cool. You can say it's cool. How would okay. I spec mine? Yeah, um, there are not a lot of <laughs> <Colors>. options. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, so there's only two colors standard. There's red and there's gray. I've I've seen those driving around. Yeah, yeah. those yeah. are the two press cars. So and sure. and so um, sure. but you can you can get any of the Audi exclusive mm. colors. You can also do paint to sample for whatever. Um, they then have a, a blackout badge package and a carbon badge package. Mm-hmm. Mm. They then have two different interior colors, basically black or tan. I liked the Nardo gray with tan and the blackout badges Ooh. was excellent. Yeah, sick. It was good. So I had the previous gen R6 oh. and it was Merlin purple. Oh, fun. That was cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, however, they've launched five new matte paint finishes oh, yeah matte paints and it really shows up the sculpture of the car yeah so I, would, matte I, I would definitely gray. consider a matte color yeah um but like i'm actually leaning towards the idea of something a bit more a bit more bold because like gray in the uk is i mean everything's gray it's gray yeah so it's like just blends in with the environment yeah but like satin sonoma green oh, or yeah. like something like that uh-huh. would be fun yeah so i yeah I do something like that, like Sonoma that. Green, tan interior, matte finish. That sounds fun. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Also, uh, carbon ceramic brakes. You yeah. get a higher top speed if you oh, get sick. carbon ceramic okay, brakes. Yeah, they're the Urus brakes. Yeah, they're, they're 17, like ten pot, aren't they? Seventeen and a half inch <laughs> ten piston brakes. <laughs> ten piston. Uh, RS6 sick. gets rear steer. Does well. it? Yeah, standard. Oh, man, I'm super this is going to be. Uh, it's just construction outside. Okay. That's why yeah, I don't yeah. normally do daytime right. shows. Sorry. Right. There's. Um, there's going to be a very prevailing trend in which manufacturers abandon weight savings and just start putting rear steer in everything. Uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jack O'Neill says, what would you prefer daily driving and maybe the occasional track day, a 2015 S4 or a 2015 S3? The occasional track day? Yeah. S3. Just I'd probably have the S3. Less weight. Yeah. you got to track it. More nimble. Yeah, exactly. Very tunable. Yeah, for sure. Uh, also, what is a good first Rolex? Dude, a good first watch is a watch that you want to wear. That's 100%. the most important thing. Like 100%. Yeah, yeah. Y- don't know. buy a watch for other people. That's no, and don't <laughs> buy a watch a just because you think it's going to be a good investment, especially yeah. not for your first watch. Yeah, you should buy a watch yeah. that you're comfortable wearing every day. Yeah, That's yeah. what's a good thing about steel Rolexes. You can literally wear them every day with every outfit. But I, I, yeah, I see a Rolex as like a 911. It's Pretty like, much. You can daily it. You, you know, can do it's, anything it's, with it. They're just the all-round, yep. so, great quality daily driver. You know, steel, yeah. steel Submariner, mm-hmm. steel GMT is a good place to start. Mm. Anything steel, really. Yeah. Kyle yeah. Hayes says, uh, Matt and James, what are the primary differences, good or bad, of the American versus British YouTube scenes? So We kind of talked about that a yeah, little bit well, already, but I'm going to yeah. get another water. Hold on. Go ahead. Yeah, Take sure. It. So this might be, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but um, say you capture 1% of the automotive audience in the UK and 1% of the automotive audience in the US, you're immediately <laughs> right. 40 times bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so that's helpful. Um yeah, I'd say yeah, it's like your vote in matter. Wisconsin versus your vote yeah, in California. Exa- yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I have 3% of the UK market. Oh, it's 12 oh, people. Cool. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I think from a, a YouTube standpoint, I guess it's predominantly volume. Yeah. yeah. Do they, are they still, is the supercar spotter thing still a thing over there? Massive. Yeah. It's getting a bit, a little bit daft though, because everyone, it's, it's really odd. I mean, look, it's, it's better than doing nothing, but you know, you drive through London and they'll be like, and I'm not exaggerating, like 20 to 30 people, spotters, taking pictures of the same car, the same yeah. level, the same street, <laughs> at the same time, and then it's a rush to for everyone to publish exactly the same car. Oh my God. And, like, and really, I should understand that culture, but I, 
I don't. I don't understand the let's all post the same thing at the same time sort of thing. What I do appreciate, though, is those spotters that are like, right, I'm going to ninja this and go somewhere else and find my own thing and be like, ha, screw you guys, I got exclusive on this car. That's cool. I um, am really annoyed at the modern trend we're starting to see here hmm. of people putting their Instagram handle on their car. Oh. <laughs> is that happening here? Yeah. Uh, like where like where a rally driver might have their have name and their flag. Oh, it's an Instagram it's their handle. their Instagram handle. Yeah, wow. it's not good. That's, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> that hasn't made it over to England yet. I, M- well, MB but, is Frenchy. I don't yeah. know what you want from me, homie. He asked yesterday, in my opinion, why does paint protection film peel? And Amber was on the show yesterday, Amber Blondie of GI. Her shop installs paint protection film. She said traditionally it peels because they're using pre-cut. It's not wrapped around the edges of the panels and dirt and whatever gets in those edges and over time it separates it. Hmm. He's back with another, saying again, why does it peel? So interestingly, and I'm not sure if you know this, I'm a shareholder in a paint protection film Oh, company you are? In England. What's the name of it? It's called NVN okay. London. Um, why, in your opinion, why does it peel when it peels? Um, surface preparations. I was going to say done prep. poorly. Yeah, it's always prep. Like yeah. you can have paint protection film that doesn't go to the edge and and roll over, which isn't good practice. Mm-hmm. But if the surface is prepped, that that shit will stick, unless you take it to a, a bad car wash and they yeah, put and the they, jet spray right up to right. it. Right. But generally, it's surface prep. Yeah. I was going to say in in. Yeah, when it's a vinyl or wrap or yeah. clear of any kind, mm. the, if it's not that its edges are being peeled off by mm. something physically, then yeah, it's, yeah. it's not been prepped right. Yeah. Um, Casey Nielsen, thoughts on paint protection spray versus paint protection film. Freddie Hernandez Tavares was in here. He yeah. had his Lambo oh, right, done yeah. in this spray. Okay, where yeah. they it's it's a paint protection film that sprays onto the car. Okay, and then it hardens like almost like clear coat, but it can be taken off. Okay, it's so it's weird. like it's like a peelable paint clear coat thing. Yeah, but it it looks like paint and it feels hard. It doesn't feel soft. It's okay, weird. So c- cool. Yeah, but I know that to apply that you got to take the car apart. You do. That is the and that I'm, is the. I'm thing. not a fan of that. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> that was, I mean, that yeah. was what he said. He had it yeah. done while his car was it's apart, in yeah, so it, it. it was yeah. no big deal. Yeah, yeah. if but, it's in that process, then cool. Yeah. I'm not sure. And as well, typically, most cars which are being PPF'd, and this is a generalization, but most cars which are being PPF'd tend to be brand new mm-hmm. because they are un, untouched. Because they're fresh. So yeah. you can preserve them. Yeah. So inherent nature of that is it's just come off this like laser precision factory that costs like someone 12 billion dollars to build and then some guy in a garage takes it apart with a spanner it's yeah. not going to go back together again with the same uh, delightful panel exactly <laughs> so, I, yeah. I hate taking, taking cars car apart car. yeah i like too, i yeah. hate if you like right now yeah. in uh hey a smoke tire drinking game <laughs> in my lamborghini <laughs> i i have a blown speaker and okay. I've got this, the original Alpine stereo oh, with the original cool. CD player, and it yeah. works. It's right. fine. But, but I have a blown speaker. speaker. Yeah. But the speakers in a Countach are literally like behind the fucking leather. So you have to take like <laughs> half the interior <laughs> apart, uh, and there's no rattles or anything that. in it right now. And I'm yeah. like, <gasps> fuck, it's never it. been apart. Yeah. Like, I, d- fuck I totally it. get it. Fuck it. I'll wear yeah. headphones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get a Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> yeah, Forget about it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not taking it apart. It'll never go back yeah, together man. right. Uh, let's see. Um, MB is Frenchy again. James, since you drove the new Bentley Continental GT, aside from the tech, how would you express the differences of the new car from the old V8S? Light years ahead. Just in terms of what? Advancements? Well, in terms it's a of- Porsche now. Right. Oh, okay. it's a Panamera. Shortened, exactly. Yeah. As opposed to a Phaeton. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's and a it, big fucking difference. Uh, it's huge. I mean, you know, going back to Taycan being a, a driver's car, I wouldn't necessarily class the previous Bentley as a something to grab by the scruff of its neck and pedal. No, V8S did a pretty. It was pretty much better remarkable than the V12. Yeah, for sure. but still, it was a chunky bitch. So yeah, I mean, they are once again, it's a it's a tank like machine in terms of weight. Um, but the introduction of rear wheel steer on that car and it's a twin clutch gearbox so it actually changes gear when you want it to (laughs) rather than like pulling a paddle and going oh 
Is it is it's it PDK? Game. It's PDK. It's PDK. It's PDK. Is this the first to, car to ever leave Porsche with PDK? Um, I mean, to ever be. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, yeah, excuse yeah. me. I said that backwards. But first yes, non-Porsche right. to ever have PDK. Yes, it is. Um, so it's also the first W12 in the world to be mated to a uh, to a clutch PDK. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Which is actually a much more significant engineering feat than you might expect because PDKs typically don't deal with torque that well. And the Bentley, being a twin turbocharged mm. W12, has massive torque. So they put so much... In fact, they delayed the launch of the car just to get the calibration of the gearbox right. How interesting. Yeah. Um, so I actually lived with one for six months. As six a, months? Uh, as like a long-termer. <sighs> I didn't buy it. It was like I, given to me as a that's not so bad. factory car. It was yeah. amazing. It was graphite gray on. No, it, sorry, brand terms was tungsten on cricket ball red interior. It's very sorry. British. Is that real? So that's real. Tungsten on tungsten cricket ball. Tungsten on cricket yeah, ball. Yeah, that's the most English yeah, know, thing I've ever so heard. Good. How far back do I have to go um, to find it? A bit further. Not okay. not, not not too, too far much further. Um, I'll find it. Keep going. Gumball there. All right. right so what yeah, else? Yeah. Anyway. Um, Yes, yeah, so, and also the interior, there is not a luxury car out there right now with a better interior than a Bentley Continental GT. It's absolutely exceptional. That's Tungsten it. Tungsten on cricket ball. There you go. Tungsten on cricket ball right there. <laughs> Actually, the it's interior, the interior was gorgeous. Really, really yeah. nice. Uh, I mean, it had this, I think the name sound system in there is like, th- this could be wrong, but it's 2,200 watts. That sounds I right. Think. No, that sounds um, right. Substantial, man. Mm-hmm. Like, it just, you know, yeah, and that because definitely it's so right. quiet, you're... Like when you close the doors and those soft closed doors like suck shut, it's like, yeah. and you're in your own vacuum, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's got, I mean, the car literally has double glazing. Like, yeah. so you're like isolated from the world and it's, it's That's beautiful, good. man. It's a 630 horsepower as well. So yeah, yeah cool not car. bad. Very, very cool car. Uh, Shaky Burn says, uh, I inherited my dad's Cartier Santos watch, Sick. which I love. Yeah. What maintenance do I need to do to focus on keep it ticking? I have some advice. Yeah. If it works now, yeah. don't do don't, shit. Don't touch it. Yeah. yeah. When it stops telling time correctly, 100%. take it to an independent shop. Don't go to uh-huh. a Cartier store. Go to a local independent shop uh-huh. to wherever you live and whatever your city is. Google uh, vintage Swiss watch repair uh-huh. and find someone with great ratings and then just have them a service done. And a service at an independent shop for that should be like 500 bucks. Yeah. And that service should last you 10 years. For sure. My dad has one. Santos? Santos. Um, he... I think he's had it. I think he's had it over twenty years. Got it serviced two years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's a, it's yeah, a yeah. super stout oh, watch. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that and one with the, the black, the black strap yeah. here. No, sorry, the one which was on the black oh. background. It was actually quite small. Oh, this guy. Like twenty years ago, like forty-four and forty-two mil watches weren't a thing. Yes, watches so have gotten big. They look big. small. Um, but yeah, he he uh, wears that, and he the, he got it serviced like after twenty years of wear. The Cartier Santos was the first ever sport watch designed to be worn on a man's wrist. Is watches right? at the time were pocket watches, and ladies wore very dainty mm. little bracelet type watches. But um, a cool. a pilot named Alberto Santos Dumont asked his friend Louis Cartier, "Would you be able to make a watch that I could strap to my wrist while I'm flying this airplane?" And he did. And the Cartier Santos was, was the born. first ever men's sport wrist watch. Very good knowledge. There you go. I like that. You learn something every day. <clears throat> um, Freddie says, "I recently drove a Ferrari F430 Scuderia on track, and I loved the way it drove." I've always been a vet guy, and I plan on buying a C8. How does a C8 compare to the Ferrari F430 performance-wise? I'm not. Have, I'm you, not. have you driven C8 yet? No, I, I was about to say I'm not as well positioned to answer this because I, I don't have any knowledge of, no, a, of a C8. You're going to drive one soon, I imagine, right? Yeah. Someone else, yeah, yeah. Rohan down here asked your opinion of the Cor- Corvette C8. Uh-huh. Sorry, Rohan, he hasn't driven one. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I actually am not proud to admit that I wrote off a 430 sc- scooter rear. Really? <laughs> yeah, up until then, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely incredible. And while I'm not a big fan of single clutch gearboxes, Ferrari got that nailed. That, that was one cool. was, was usable, yeah, was, actually. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, not it was really bad. Good. Yeah. Um, so how does it pre- compare to a 430 performance-wise? Uh, much more muted, the C8 is. Much mm. more insulated, not as raw, and not as like you know fizzy and tingly. That being said, chassis-wise... 
The C8 feels a lot like a 458 with an LS motor swapped in. Really? Yeah, it does. Hey, wow, that's, co- um, that's cool. The, the really steering good. is really sharp, uh-huh. um, sharper than the 430. Uh, the brakes are really good. The, the chassis, the ride is beautiful. The ride is substantially better than a Ferrari 430. Mm-hmm. But what you're going to be missing and what, you know, one of the things that you get in a Ferrari is this very revvy, very aggro, fizzy, dual yeah. overhead cam engine which is not what you get what from the c8 rev to 68 it's low oh, lowest revving so mid-engine car on the market good is nine yeah so i mean like, and, yeah, and so. in a scud yeah everything good happens but after the corvette's done right yeah you know what i sure. mean yeah it's all up there in the yeah. band and i mean you know the nature of the scuderia while the c8 is a is a sports or supercar they haven't that like the C8 isn't the lightweight version of itself. No, the correct. Scuderia it's is, not so the lightweight version. No it's not the revving name. version either. Exactly. So the cool thing about the Scuderia is like when you set off, there's so much no sound deadening that you can hear the like pebbles hitting the arches yeah. and you're aware that you're in something pretty stripped out and lightweight. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Mm. Um, but, but I think um, the Corvette does a, for a first mid-engine car, it, it does mm-hmm. well. Um Cool. But listen, Ferraris have the fizz. They do. Mm. Um, Greg says, I went and played some old new Need for Speed games, and the custom stuff as I did as a kid was hilarious and shocking. Are there any auto trends you used to think were hot, but now look back on with embarrassment? Dude. Oh, yes. Dude, my dad still rips the piss out of me for this, because I really wanted neons under my car. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Two hands up in this room. <laughs> yeah, man. I wanted some neons. Every Street now and again, he'll... Glow. he'll Bring it up. In fact, I remember when I bought the the F12, he was like, do you want to fit some neons on that? I was like, fuck you. <laughs> you should. You <laughs> should imagine? just to be a piece of shit. Oh, man. You so should. Funny. The next time you buy something crazy, yeah. you should put neon yeah. on it just Could to be imagine? a piece of shit. It would be the funniest thing. My Subaru <laughs> back in the day uh, when I was in high school, uh-huh. neons. Ne- cool. there was There was yeah. neons. Yeah. Wow. And, and, uh, and also some... Some vinyl that I'm not proud of, and uh, that I would never ever do again. Yeah, it's it was all, it was all yeah. just dumb shit that you stuck on your car. The neon thing for me, I was learning to drive at the time Fast and Furious launched. Right. So I mean, I was fucked from day so one. So for like, that me, was, that, that was it. I'm talking about three yeah. years before Fast and Furious. Mm. So I, I had neons in '97 and '98. <laughs> and, okay. Wow. And at that's... the time, like it's really embarrassing now. Mm. At the time. It was not embarrassing. It became embarrassing After when Fast. Fast and Furious came out, okay. and then it was like, no, it's "Oh, cliche. this is a parody now." And then it had to go. Right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see. Carl Sanders says, "How would you option a new 911?" Wait, what? He and then he. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, all right. I get the question here. It's just it, he worded this horribly. Would you rather drive? A new 911 that has a four liter GT3 engine, but with the old garbage Tiptronic from like the 964, (laughs) or one with a base 996 engine with the IMS problem, but with the six speed out of the new car. So terrible engine, good gearbox, or good gearbox, or or vice flip it. I'm going to go with, and you know what? If any of my audience are watching, they'll probably be surprised at this because it's become a thing on my channel that I'm a gearbox snob. Mm. However, are you more of a four liter snob? Between gears, I take the engine because yeah. I think you're in. You, I think you're using the engine more than you are the gears. So okay, it's going to take you 12 minutes to get the next gear, but once you're in that gear, that engine's going to rip. Yeah. Whereas. You you want to have an instantaneous shift until the next like depressing acceleration input? No, I'm good. Um, GT3 engine. I'm with you. Fun. Yeah, I'm with. Yeah. Uh, do you yeah. imagine that a four liter <laughs> GT3 with a Tiptronic? That'd be fucking hilarious. Um, a bunch of thank yous and L Dad Bod. Anything to peer to fear buying a used Prius Prime? I don't think so. Well, I w- I mean. Uh, well, to okay. fear, yeah. <laughs> not from the reliability <laughs> Dude, of the not car. From the re- exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, interestingly, um, I heard that the older... Is Prius a thing or pre It's like, what's the plural uh, here? Plural? Plural. I think it's Prius Prius is? I think it's Prius is. Okay, so um, battery problems. Are they having any? Well, 
I I've read, never heard anything like that. Oh, really? Oh, maybe this is just a maybe there was just a recall in the UK and it was maybe like a, maybe okay. The, I, I would say it's probably fine. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know about the Prime because that's the little. That's, is uh-huh. that the little one? Which one is a Prius Prime? Is that the cheap one? Oh, is the Prime the Prius new Prime or smaller is one? The twenty tw- no no it's, it's the it's the super aerodynamic one. It's the ugly one. Oh, you'll be fine with that. Yeah, no, yeah, you're no, fine. that's cool. That, I'm, I'm thinking like the old taxi, basically. No, no, no. no. I oh, mean, okay. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I get picked up at LAX and yeah, fucking yeah. beat old Prius taxis <laughs> all the time. Good to go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. you'll be fine. Um, last one, and then we're out of here. Mm. I. I'm not sure I understand the question. Thoughts on America finally getting the top model, and I'm wondering if he's referring to the reality show America's Next Top Model. <laughs> Did they choose a winner? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I think he's on about the RS6. Oh, the first time the yeah, RS6 that has we come get it. Yeah, yeah. Stateside. Well, My they're not doing an audience. RS6 sedan, so no, no, no saloon. It's just it's, or RS7 is now the the, the sedan. four door. Yeah. yeah, okay. And then six is the Avant. I think that's good. That's, I think that's fine. Good. The six is only Avant. Like you would only spec Avant. The question really is like yeah. I want them to sell a bunch of these, yeah. but Americans don't like wagons. They just don't. That's interesting. And not they. It's weird. They Americans are just not about wagons. And I, mm. is that because oh screen mouth? Uh, oh boy. Well, I hope oh. well, we're still. We're still streaming. Still streaming. Wow, that just that took was a fucking yeah. power surge. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's all right. We're fine. Yeah, um, um, is I, it because there's it, never been any cool ones? There have not been a lot of cool ones. There have been a lot of terrible ones. Maybe here. that's it. Right? The, all through the '80s, America yeah, was just horrendous. shit wagons. That's a point. Uh, '70s yeah, and yeah. '80s, and also <laughs> like we. Um, because we're such a trucks culture, mm-hmm. the you know when people get more money, they want a, a bigger SUV. There's not a, there's not okay. Yeah, yeah. People it, buy cars here for fringe yeah. scenarios that'll never happen. Right. You know why were you why are you gonna buy a truck? You just go to the office. It's like, well, what if I need to haul a horse? What? <laughs> 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 Whereas you go to England and you see a fucking yeah. polo towing a yeah, caravan. Yeah, for sure. I'm and you. <laughs> Oh, no. crack me ass. Yeah. You know? Do you know what's funny? And just quickly before we yeah, sign no off, rush. the going back to electric cars and Taycan, um, whenever I speak to people, they always measure the prospect of, of owning one of these cars in the most extreme circumstances. Mm. So they're like, what if I want to drive from London to Scotland, <laughs> right? Which is for anyone who's not familiar with it's the geography, hours, right? it's like the length of our entire country. Yeah. I'm like, Get the train, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like wh- I was like, when's the last time you did that? Uh, I don't know, but what if? You know, I mean, I take can, a different car. I can definitely appreciate range anxiety. Like mm. that when I had Taycan like yesterday. Uh-huh. I mean, I had to put way more thought into my Canyon Drive than I otherwise would what? have. Now, sure. did I have a good time? Yes. Was uh-huh. the car bonsai fast? Yes. Uh-huh. Did I make it to a charger? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. But did I really have to consider what I was doing? Mm-hmm. Did I, you know, one thing I, here's what I, one of the things I love about my job yeah. is not the filming. It's how I drive home when I'm done. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I drive, exactly I drive a mean. certain way up that mountain. Sure. I drive a certain way while mm-hmm. I'm filming mm-hmm. and then the cameras go in the case and it's time it's to go home. Story, for sure. And that drive is the best drive I have all day. Yeah. In the Taycan, yeah, yeah, I, agree. I coasted. It was the opposite. I yeah, coasted sure. the entire way <laughs> down the hill. Now I had I played another game, which uh-huh. was how long can I go without using the brakes, which is another sure, fun is game. And I yeah, went yeah. very far. For sure. but, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because the cornering speeds are so crazy. Yeah, that's amazing. I was like, "Fuck yeah, it, no let's brakes. Just, let's just send it." Yeah. <laughs> And also, I think on Taycan, the brake regen only works when you're using the brakes. Correct. Yeah. Unlike Tesla, there loads are, of people yeah. called me out on that. When I so when I was when I was explaining this first drive, I was like, you know, when you lift off on Tesla, there's loads of regen, there's like loads yeah, of friction. It's one pedal driving. Yeah, audience were like. Man, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, bro. I was like, no, specifically on this Porsche, <laughs> it's it's when you apply the brakes. Yeah, yeah. In a Tesla, you can deactivate that. There's a switch, and you can you right. can make it coast further, or okay. you can make it regen more. Yeah. The Porsche doesn't give you that option. No. The Porsche, they have decided in Germany math, uh-huh. as opposed to Silicon <laughs> right. Valley math, yep. that it is better to use the vehicle's weight as inertia uh-huh. than to try and resist it to capture uh, regen. Yeah. 
That's it. A okay. Re- regen when you break. Yeah. As it were. Yeah. Uh, other than your uh, Instagram mm. and N N V N N N N N November Victor November N V N is your is your protective film. So N V N's protective film. That's N V N London. I have your. I have the gram for that here. N V N London. Yeah. I wonder if I wonder if after this did you wrap this yeah. uh, this launch yeah. Stratos? We d- we did PPF on it. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. So what am I? I'm on uh, Instagram at Mr J W W and YouTube. YouTube is my main platform. Obviously, That's YouTube the, like, Mr J W W. Get yeah. this man to 500k. He deserves. Hey, it. if we get it today, I'll put all the credit in your hands. Mm. <laughs> Probably not today because sure, it's, sure. it's live. Yeah. When this goes oh, course, up for when it goes yeah, up for yeah. real. Okay. All cool. right, folks. Yeah. Well, thank you uh, for. Oh shit. Um, you know what's been fascinating about this? Hmm. I haven't sworn on camera ever. Oh, and really? Then, when you sat no, down and was like, welcome, fuckers. I was no, like, whoa, okay. No time like the president. <laughs> that sets the tone. <laughs> um, I don't want to leave quick gearhead hanging because he okay. just made a donation. And we'll right. just real quick. My wife has a Volkswagen Tiguan, which is a fucking terrible car. <laughs> and it's absolutely abysmal. I, right. My wife went to look at one. It was a hunk of shit. My Uber dro- dropped me off here. In was a Tiguan? A it's, a, Tiguan. it's a sad yeah. car. Yeah. And uh, he's looking at a used Macan S. That. That is an excellent car. That is the one. That is an excellent car. Uh, I, is there anything else I should be looking at? He wants to know. I I have a McCann. It's turbo, lovely, isn't it? And it is mega. It ticks all the boxes. Yeah, man. it's a luxury Do you rally know what car. It's more like yeah, it's more like a 911 on stilts than it is yeah. a smaller KN. It's like a. It's kind of like a hot hatch feel about it. It drives amazingly yeah, well. It's the, very, very cool. The, you don't need to get the turbo either. If you get the mm. Macan S and then you put a Cobb tune on it, below mm. about 5,000 RPM, it feels exactly the same as a turbo. Really? I got a turbo as a press car, yeah. and my neighbor's got an S, and we put a Cobb tune on it. Below just... 5,000 RPM, the same. Okay. Five to 68 or whatever it is, yeah. massive difference in the really? turbo. But That's interesting. But only it, it only matters if you're going quick. Sure. If you're just driving yeah. it around town, it was Daily the same. Daily is fine. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It was the same. Super cool. Mr. Yeah. James Walker. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming in. Man. Thank you for the invite. I appreciate it's, it. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I want to... You want to take a walk across the street? I'll That'd show you great. West Side Collector yeah, Car Storage. Yeah, I would storage. love to see that. Um, do you know what? When we first met, you told me about this project. That's when I this started This is like it. four years ago, dude. So <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited to see Chapter 2. All right. For those of you with us live, uh, come join us again. Three o'clock Pacific in three hours. We're gonna have another wow, show. You are pumping it out, man. John Klein and cool. Colin Woodard, who are two very successful automotive journalists, um, both of whom got their start by interning for me. Very and they're cool. uh, they're in they're in here this afternoon at three o'clock. Uh, for everybody else, go subscribe to Mister JWW on YouTube and Instagram and all the things. And until then, the Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, and ideally something to say. I'll see y'all later.